It's my birthday today, so I thought I would come to the greatest city in the whole world, London. We're going to start at one of the most underrated places in London. Not many people know about this place. This is called The Garden at 120 and this view is free. Of course, there's a lot of rooftop bars and restaurants in London, but they're very expensive just to get inside. You need to buy something, but you can come to The Garden at 120 completely free. Here are some things that you can see from The Garden at 120. The Shard, Tower Bridge and the River Thames, the Gherking, Downtown London. I'll be honest, I didn't know about this place until very recently, but it's really cool. Very nice garden up here. To get to the garden at 120, you need to go to London Bridge. You will pass through a security check and go in the elevator up to the 15th floor. So that was the garden at 120. There is a restaurant up there too on the 14th floor. The garden's on the 15th floor, but you don't have to buy anything. So I'm behind schedule already because if you've never been to England before, our transport is terrible. It's horrible. So two of my trains were canceled. So I'm already an hour behind schedule, but we have a full day today. I'm celebrating my birthday in London. I'm so excited to be in London. I love London so much. I think we're gonna be lucky with the weather today because it rains pretty much every single day, but we could be lucky on my birthday. Just down the street from the garden at 120 is the Sky Garden. And to go up there, it's another rooftop. To go up there, like the reservations are like two months booked up. It is gonna be a long, long day here in London because I have so much planned. Like I said, we already lost an hour, but that's all right. We're gonna try and do as much as possible. I'm gonna try and do some underrated things that not many people know about, but I'm also gonna try and do some things that I've never done before. That is the Shard. Our next destination, not too far away from the Garden at 120, this is called the St. Dunstan in the East Church Garden. I looked online and it's like every single list that I saw like hidden gems in London, like this is pretty much top of the list. So never been here before again. Never known about it until recently, but let's check it out. It's right there, but just before we go there, London is one of those places where I would love to see it like a thousand years ago because look at this street. Like I can just imagine, well, I can't even imagine like what was going on here like 500 years ago, a thousand years ago. I think it's so cool. Look at that. I saw some pictures of this place online and it was absolutely full of people, but not today. Just a few people. So what is this place? St. Dunstan in the East is a historic church located in the city of London, originally built in the 12th century. Wow, 12th century. And it was damaged in the Great Fire of London, 1666. It was highly damaged during the Blitz in World War II and it was restored to a public garden in the 70s and today, it's a peaceful green garden. That is so cool. When I see places like this, I always think that some rich man has tried to buy it, knock it down and like build like an office or something, but they've kept it. I think it's so cool, like a bit of history. 12th century is crazy. This is where I am. So the Tower of London is right here. Here is St. Paul's Cathedral, River Thames. So we have another destination right here. So let's go. Again, I think these small rows are so cool. So it's currently 10.45. I have a reservation to do something at one. So I'm kind of in a rush to do a few things before then. But after that, we should be able to relax. But we got to see London, baby. Man, London is so cool. So about the transport, our trains are not good. They're very unreliable, they're very dirty, graffiti everywhere, they're very expensive. Like my train, two, two of my trains were cancelled this morning, two. So if you ever come to England, just be prepared for that. I think everybody knows fish and chips, but not many people know pie and mash. Anybody had pie and mash? There will literally be a million of those London souvenir shops all over London, but they all sell the same stuff. So that's the Tower of London. We're going to see something else that I've never seen before. The London Wall. So that is the London Wall. What is the London Wall? The London Wall was a defensive wall built by the Romans in the city of London in the late second century. Second century is crazy. It served as a boundary for the city stretching around two miles 
and it had forts, gates and towers but only a little bit of it exists today and it's right here. There you go, London Wall. You can compare London to New York City but there's a lot of similarities but there's so many differences. It just feels so, I don't know, it feels so British. It's very, very, very British. I don't know, is, uh, is New York City traditional? Mm, I don't know. I don't think anyone would describe New York City as a traditional American city but London is so traditional. There's so many, there's so many traditions that they still have today that they've kept around and I love that. Like I'm so proud to be British and I love it. I love coming to London. I love when foreigners come to London and they love it but yeah, London is amazing. Tower of London. I've been here a few times on a school trip like many years ago. Look at this line to get in. So you do need a ticket to get inside. It is pretty expensive. So what is the Tower of London? The Tower of London is a historic castle located on the north bank of the River Thames in central London, England. England, huh? It was founded in 1066 as part of the Norman conquest of England and has served variously as a royal palace, prison, treasury, arsenal, or even a zoo. Today, it is a popular tourist attraction and houses the crown jewels of the United Kingdom. There you go. River Thames is right there. That's the Shard. Tower of London. So it's almost 1,000 years old. It's crazy. Yeah, I've been inside a few times when I was a school kid because a lot of school trips like to come here because it's very historic. You can learn a lot of cool stuff. But uh, yeah, so many people, so many tourists. Here's a ticket office. I'm absolutely flabbergasted. I can't believe it. £34 to go inside the Tower of London. That is crazy prices. London is ridiculously expensive. Here's another tip. Fish and chips. The closer the fish and chip shop is to an attraction, the worse the quality is going to be. So don't get fish and chips next to an attraction. Here's one for my American friends. This is an ice cream van. You call it an ice cream truck, we call it an ice cream van. Here's one thing that many people don't know. They have Uber boats. Uber boats on the River Thames. So I am going to give you a history lesson very quickly because many people are confused. So there's two bridges here, Tower Bridge, London Bridge. This one, it has towers. So this is Tower Bridge. That one has no towers. It's just the bridge. That one is London Bridge. Tower Bridge has towers. London Bridge, just a bridge. See the Uber? Uber boat. I bet these people are so cold. Let's take a walk over Tower Bridge and I'll tell you some fun facts. Tower Bridge is a famous suspension bridge in London. It's known for its iconic two towers, Tower Bridge, and it has a drawbridge. So it still opens and it opens right here. So I'm right at the spot where it opens. This is the middle of the bridge. So if a big ship is coming, the bridge can actually open crazy. Something that really surprised me is construction began in 1886 and completed in 1894. It's not even that old. I thought it was way older than that but no it's a pretty new bridge. Well it's new compared to the Tower of London. Two towers, drawbridge. And one last thing you actually can go up here. It's pretty cheap. I think it's 12 pounds to go up in the Tower of London. It's pretty cool. I think it's crazy that some people literally drive over this bridge every single day to get to work and then some people come here one day in their whole life to take a picture. I think it's crazy but it's just a normal bridge. It's just a pedestrian bridge. You can cycle over it, you can drive, you can walk but so iconic. I feel like when people think about London, Tower Bridge, is, Tower bridge and Buckingham Palace maybe are the two things that they really think about. One of the very sad parts of London is this. So many homeless people. It's so sad to see it 2024. We should not have any homeless people, but there are a lot in London. Ice cream van. I think that is one of the best views in London. Right there. So cool. Tower of London right there, Tower Bridge. So this is Queen's Walk. So we're on our way to one of my favorite places in the whole of London. So I'm going to walk along Queen's Walk, take a slow walk, relax and enjoy the view of London.
that was Queen's Walk, only like a 10 minute walk, but Tower Bridge, London Bridge. This is London Bridge City Pier. And do you remember the Uber boat next to the Tower of London? To go one stop, it's nine pounds. London Bridge is falling down, falling down. London Bridge, just a bridge, nothing special. No towers. We are going to be taking a quick detour because I don't live in London. I don't. I have no idea how anybody lives in London. It's crazy. It's so busy. But my dad is working in London, so he just called me and said he's working down the street. So I'm going to go see him, and he's working in a very, very famous place that you have seen in a movie. So many runners in London. I feel like there's a few stereotypes about London that are actually true. So the red buses, there's so many red buses everywhere. Red phone boxes, yes, but they're not used anymore. I mean, they're still used, but they're not used as phone boxes. People just use them to take pictures and another thing, fish and chips and pubs. So here, you can see a red bus. It's true, it's true. So yes, there are pubs everywhere. And the next pub I see, I'm gonna share, share some history with you about the names of pubs. But fish and chips, yeah, we like to eat fish and chips. Fish and chip shops everywhere. Just your Tower Bridge, just your London Bridge. <laughs> the most fun thing about speaking Chinese is people don't expect me to speak Chinese. So there was a Chinese couple just there and they said, look, look, it's London Bridge. And I said, no, no, this is London Bridge. That is Tower Bridge. There you go, London buses. And if you visit here, you just need a debit card. You can just tap on top of you don't need to buy a ticket. And you can also do the open bus tour when it's not raining, of course. You need to watch the roads here, very, very dangerous. I get questions every single video about my accent. Now, at least you can understand me. You might not be able to guess my accent, but at least you can understand me because the proper Londoner accent is, it's, it's difficult to understand even for British people, but it's so funny, I love that accent. Another very London thing is black cabs. They are very expensive. People do use them, but very expensive. See like this tiny street, like what was going on here like a thousand years ago? But there's a sign here. It says the site of the Cross Keys Inn destroyed 1666, the Great Fire of London. Like imagine right this spot right here, even a hundred years ago, you can't even imagine it, crazy. We are just arriving at Leiden Hall Market. So I'm gonna walk around for a few minutes. I'm not gonna tell you which movie was filmed here. You're gonna guess and then I'm gonna tell you. guest let me show you Harry Potter was right here this is Dagon Alley well this is not Dagon Alley I think this is where Hagrid walked with Harry to get to Dagon Alley right but this is so cool this is such a good photo spot and again I've never been here ever Wow, so this is Leiden Hall Market. I put everywhere I go today, I put it in the description so you can come here too, but definitely come here. And this is where my dad is working, so I'm gonna meet him. But there's so many cool restaurants here, cool bars. I can just imagine this place in summer, like completely packed out with people. The weather's good, having some drinks. It's so cool. This is what I mean when I compare New York with London. Like New York has nothing like this. I mean, this is obviously like redone and and um, reconstructed and stuff like that and it's taken care of very well but yeah New York doesn't really have anything classic like this I think it's amazing proper London the next time you're in London don't forget to get your Air Arlo eSIM card and eSIM cards ensures that you have full coverage wherever you are traveling to not just London Air Arlo offers eSIM cards in over 200 different countries so wherever you're going Air Arlo has you covered you can choose how long you need the coverage to be and how much data you have. But if you are traveling to more than one country, you can literally choose the region that you're traveling to and have coverage for the whole area. If you're going to Asia, you just need one package to cover the whole of Asia. But if you're doing a world tour, they have a global eSIM card. It is so easy to set up your new eSIM card. Just download the app, 
Choose your destination and package, install the eSIM card and activate immediately to gain coverage. Click the link below this video and use my referral code BEN7012 to save $3 on your first purchase. Happy traveling. Just had lunch with my dad, he's working right up there, but it's 1 p.m. now, so we're gonna miss our reservation, that's all right, but let's go to the next destination. One thing that is similar in London and New York is the subway. Well, we call it the London Underground, but they're both very dirty. That is called the Monument. You can go to the top, it costs six pounds. Walking back over London Bridge now, still no rain, but it's very, very windy. And by the way, Tower Bridge does open up, but London Bridge does not. An old fashioned British pub. The Barrow Boy and Banker. I just love these back streets of London. Like I said, when I see these streets, it makes me think about like 100 years ago, 500 years ago, like I'd love to know what was going on right here. That long ago, it's crazy, but we're just coming to one of my favorite places in London. I think it's so cool. It is not Dirty Lane. Who's that? That is William Shakespeare. And just over here is the Shakespeare Globe. And they still have plays here. They still have real Shakespeare plays here at the Shakespeare Globe. I think it's so cool. I love this area so much. It's right by the River Thames and there's a lot of, what's the word? There's a lot of fairy tales or myths about pirates in London. And this area was very, very popular for pirates back in the day because of course there's pubs here. So apparently pirates used to bring their ships to the Thames. They used to dock or whatever. They used to go to the pub, get some drinks and then they would go back to their ship. So this is a very, very popular pirate place. We are going there very soon, but there are so many coffee shops in London. Let me ask you a question. Do you know which city around the world has the most coffee shops? Anyone? Anyone? I'll tell you in one minute. There it is, Shakespeare Globe Theatre. Of course, there's Romeo and Juliet. You can do a tour. So that's what it looks like inside. Looks really, really cool. All of these people are going inside right now to watch Romeo and Juliet, how cool is that? But let me tell you about the Shakespeare Globe Theatre. It's a reconstruction of the original Globe Theatre where William Shakespeare actually performed his plays in the 16th and 17th century. It reproduces and designs the original Shakespeare plays here and also Elizabethan theatre. How cool is that? One of my favourite things in London, it's so cool. And I have no idea who lives here, but I'm jealous. So cool. We're gonna walk along the Manellian Bridge. One of the coolest photo spots in London is right here. Look at that. Manellian Bridge, that is St. Paul's Cathedral. We're going there right now. I love the fact that so many people are in London today, the only day in their whole life. So cool. By the way, that thing, it looks like, looks like Homer Simpson's power plant, but that is the Tate Modern. It's an art museum, it's actually free too, but we're not going to go in today. Shakespeare Globe Theatre. St Paul's Cathedral. City of London School, rich kids only. So, the answer, which city has the most coffee shops in the world? It's not London, it's not in Italy, it's not in the US, it is Shanghai, China. So we just walked over Manelian Bridge and St Paul's is right there. I feel like everything in this area are the regular places that tourists visit when they go to London, but there are some hidden gems that not many people know about. And we're gonna to go to one just before we see some pools. It's this way. And it's to do with Shakespeare again. Check out the name of this street. New change. By the way, if you wonder what this means, this is the postal code, like the area code. Because of course, every different area of London has their own postcode. And usually like EC is East Central. So of course like SW will be Southwest. So that's how you know where it is in London because of the area code. So I'm at the corner of Cannon Street and Bread Street. Bread. And here is supposed to be the Mermaid Tavern. Now the Mermaid Tavern was famous because William Shakespeare used to drink there. So it's a pub that he used to go to, but of course it's not here anymore, but like I expected to see a sign or something, but I can't see anything, but it was here apparently. 
on Bread Street. It says that the Mermaid Tavern played an important role on the camaraderie between the different artists and writers in the 16th and 17th century in London. So, Christopher Malo, Ben Johnson and William Shakespeare are some of the most famous people to drink at the Mermaid Tavern. Don't know where it is, it's there somewhere on Bread Street, but let's go back to St Paul's. place is absolutely massive. I have no idea how they built something like this. Crazy. Amazing. St Paul's Cathedral is an iconic landmark located in London, England. England, huh? It was designed by Sir Christopher Wren and built between 1675-1710 after the Great Fire of London destroyed its predecessor. So you can actually go inside, of course they have worship times, but you can pay to go inside, I think it's like 20 pounds. But it's very famous for being the place of the funerals of Lord Nelson and Winston Churchill, Sir Winston Churchill. And also the wedding of Princess Diana and Prince Charles. And the dome is one of the biggest domes in the world. And just across the street, we have Pizza Express, Five Guys, and of course, McDonald's, yay. I'm always looking for famous people. I've never seen anybody, but we're walking along Fleet Street, and it's not as busy as Oxford Street, but it's still very busy. For my American friends, this is Cheshire. This is not Cheshire, no, 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 Cheshire. Wow, London's a lot of walking. I think London is the most historic city in the world. I love London so much. If you're ever in London, let me know. I can be your tour guide. I can show you, I can show you the secrets, the hidden gems, and we can see the, the most popular landmarks in the world. London is amazing. I love it. Another street that I'd love to see 100 years ago, Clifford's Inn Passage. What was going on here? Amazing. One really, really cool thing that I saw online you can do in London is Jack the Ripper. So of course, if you don't know the story, then look him up, but you can do a tour of all of the places related to Jack the Ripper. I think it'd be so much fun, but London is great. But very dirty, a lot of homeless, very expensive, but London's so cool. Look at this bus. So you can see this street is Chancery Lane, it's WC2, so we're West Central now. There you go, there's the red phone boxes. So many tourists take pictures with the phone boxes. G'day mate. So this street is called The Strand and if you've played the Monopoly game, the London version, then The Strand is in that game. I looked at a map of every single place on a Monopoly board in London and it's 15 miles. 15 miles if you want to see all of the places on the Monopoly board in London. Should I do it? I think that'd make such a cool video. Here's a Strand entrance to King's College London. A lot of international students go to this college and a lot of Chinese students and I can understand what they're saying even when they don't think I can. I keep changing my mind if London is busy today or not because here there's nobody but down the street there's so many people so we're back at the River Thames. Our next destination is just down the street here but I think today's a good day to be in London because it's not raining, it's not too busy there's so much to see in London. Like you can literally spend a week in London and not see everything. So much to see. Cute. Check out this cool bus. Afternoon tea bus tour. That's so cool. They got Peppa Pig. You can have tea inside. Tea and cakes. That's so cool. Join us for afternoon tea. Wow. We are trying to find Somerset House. River Thames, London Eye, somewhere over there. See what I mean? Nobody here. But there were so many people over by the Globe Theatre, St Paul, so many people, but here, nobody. I think we're going to see the London Eye. There we go. There's the London Eye. Wow. Let's go this way. You see so many people over there. They're down there, no one. This is the west wing of Somerset House. There is like a huge entrance, so it must be on the other side. Do you guys know about Greg's? Very famous sausage rolls in England. So this is Somerset House, Strand entrance. I thought there was a huge, big entrance. Let's go inside, yeah, yeah, it's inside, let's go. 
Wow, this place is huge. So what is Somerset House? Somerset House was built in 1801 by William Chambers. It's had multiple purposes such as societies, government departments. Somerset House has exhibitions, events and performances. See, New York doesn't have stuff like this. America in general does not have stuff like this. Yeah, England, England's history is so cool. But it's all still here, like you can still see it. 1801 this was built and you can go inside we're not going to go inside today but there you go at somerset house back on the strand now the next destination is just down the street and it's currently 2 15. i'm slowing down my feet are getting tired but it's all right luckily london is very walkable like there's a lot to see but there's a lot like close to each other so you can definitely walk it's just starting to rain we're heading into the theater district so right here is lion king there's mama mia just down the street there's back to the future there's Michael Jackson. There's so, <laughs> there's so much going on in London and it's not as expensive as you think. You can get some last minute tickets for very cheap, 20 or 30 pounds sometimes. But yeah, if you're ever in London, definitely look at shows because you might get lucky and get some cheap tickets. All right, it's time for me to tell you about pubs. So this pub here, this pub is called The Coach and Horses. And you can see the picture here. It's a picture of Coach and Horses. So all of the pubs in the UK are named after stuff. So like the Queen's Head or like uh, the Duke's Dog, something like that. And the reason is because in olden times, like people couldn't read. So they needed to use a picture so they knew where the pub was. So that's why pubs are named after stuff. And a good example of that is at Disney World. So at Disney World, the pub at Epcot in England is called the Rose and Crown. So if you go there, you'll see a picture of a rose and a crown. And like I said, the reason is because people could not read. So. They had to use pictures to tell people where the pub was. There you go, that's your fun fact. So this theater right here, it has Frozen. There's some people signing autographs right there at the stage door, maybe it's Elsa, I don't know. We are at our next destination, very, very famous place here, Covent Garden. 